Okay. All right, so we have this data. All right, first of all, we were supposed to calculate the mean, median, mode, and range. All right, sort of covered up my words a little bit, but um, is this what you guys got for the mean, median, mode, and range? Notice for the mode, um, why does it say no mode? How does that happen? Because uh, there are no numbers that repeat. That's why it says no mode. Okay? Any questions about these values? Okay. Um, we went ahead and did it by hand. I'm about to show you how to do it on the calculator. But let's make sure that um, these are the values that we got by hand. Let's make sure of that first. Now I went ahead and rounded all my stuff to the nearest tenth. So your answers might be slightly different if you use more decimals, but it should be pretty close. Did you guys get roughly, especially look at the sum of the squares. Did you guys get something pretty close to what I've got? All right, that's pretty close. So we're good. Okay. Um, so in that case, when we went to calculate the standard deviation, it would have been like this, right? So we got a standard deviation of very close to 13.1. Agreed? Okay. Um, variance. We might as well talk about variance because that's something that we're uh, being asked for. Um, remember, the variance is that part that you have just before you take the square root. So sure, I can get the variance by squaring the standard deviation, but I've rounded the standard deviation. So if I square this, that's going to magnify my error. So it's better to go back to the um, 1026.6 divided by 6 and use that for the variance instead of squaring 13.1. They should be close, but it's better to use the fraction for the variance. Okay? So that's what we should have gotten by hand. Now we're going to do a calculator. Yes? All right, so now I want to show you how to do this on your calculator. Your calculator will give you most of this information. Um, here's the first step. Find the data button on your calculator. Everybody hit the data button. You should get a screen that looks like this. We're just going to start typing in the data one number at a time and hitting enter. Okay? So I'm going to type in 100, enter, 83, 60, 75, 84, and 95. Okay, just type in all your data. I'm going to pause for a second and make sure everybody did that. All right, is everybody ready for the next step? Okay. Um, now, here's the main thing. Look above the data button. See how it says stat in green above the data button. That's the menu that I want, the statistics menu. How do I get to the stuff that's in green above the buttons? Second. second, okay? So everybody hit second data right now. Your screen should look like this. We want one variable statistics. So it's already highlighted. So just hit enter to choose one variable statistics. Your screen should look like this. Now, our data is in L1. L1 is already highlighted, so we can just go ahead and start hitting enter. If for whatever reason L1 is not highlighted, you need to arrow over and make sure it's L1, because that's where the numbers are. But I'm going to start hitting enter. Watch that cursor. Just, it's going down. goes down to calc. I hit enter one more time, and I get to this screen. So I hit enter like three times. Okay. Is everybody with me at this screen? Now, looking at this screen, first of all, you should be able to tell me what the mean is. So your calculator is giving you the mean and the standard deviation, and the median, for that matter. Um, can you tell me on this screen where the mean is? Right. Remember, we've learned that x bar represents the mean. Okay, so this is a, probably a quicker way for you to find the mean in the future, especially if you have a lot of numbers. Um, so the mean, 
and I went ahead and rounded 82.8 when I did this. Now, standard deviation. We will have to scroll down to see the other information. So we will arrow down. Um, can you tell that item number four is the one that has the symbol for standard deviation? Okay, so there it is. Standard deviation is 13.082, um, which I, I rounded to 13.1. That's how you do it. Okay, easy enough. Now, that's how you do it. Um, let me point out one more thing to you, and then I'm going to show you another trick on the calculator. Um, the median, I told you that the median was on here somewhere. If we scroll down even further, because remember on the beginning of the page I asked you for a mean, median, mode, range. Um, so it's helpful to know that the calculator does have the median here as well. So to check your work, you can look on this screen and make sure you have the right median. Item 9. Um, the range. You're not going to find the range listed here, but it does give you some information if we scroll around. Um, Item B here, x max equals 100. What do you think x max is? What do you think that represents? The highest number. That's the highest number. If I scroll up, item 7, x min, obviously that's the lowest number. How do we calculate the range? 100 minus 60, the highest number minus the lowest number. So it doesn't just give you the range, but it gives you the high and low. When there are a lot of numbers, sometimes it's hard to scan and look. So it's useful to know that it'll give you the high and low. You can just subtract. Now, the calculator's not going to help you much with the mode. You're kind of on your own for the mode. OK? So there's that. We're basically done, except for I want to show you a trick. You know how on the quiz tomorrow, you're going to have to make the table. You're going to have to show those values uh, on the table by hand. However, if you're clever, everybody hit the uh, data button with me right now. Come back to this screen. If you can learn the additional trick that I'm about to show you now, it will help you even set up your table. Now, when the table is as small as this one, uh, you won't really need this. But on the back page, when we have 20 numbers twice, that's 40 numbers to deal with, it will be very helpful to have your calculator doing some of this automatically. Watch how. Um, this, is, uh, this table is almost perfect for us because it has three columns, and our table has three columns. So you see we've got our data in L1 just like we usually do. What normally goes in this middle column? The, the deviation. And how do we calculate the deviation? the data minus the mean. So I would love it if there was a way that I could make list 2 become list 1 minus the mean. Well, there is a way to do that. Everybody hit the data button again right now. Can you see on the screen where it says formula? What we've just described is a formula. We want a formula that says List 2 is going to be list 1, 2, fill list 2. We need to make sure we are in list 2 before we start making this formula. Okay? So be in list 2 and hit data and go over to formula and hit enter to add a new formula. So here's the formula right here. List 2 is, we want this to say list 1 minus the mean. So, wow, how are we going to get list one right here? It seems to be all about the data button. So once again, hit the data button. When in doubt, hit the data button, because that seems to be the source of all the information. Um, we want it to say list one. List one is already highlighted, so just hit enter. So now it says, the formula so far says list two will be list one. We want it to say minus the mean. We can just type in the rest because we will say minus, and what was the mean that we previously calculated? To one decimal place, please. 82.8. So we will, we will make this formula. List 2 will be list 1 minus the mean, 82.8. If I hit enter right now, let's see what happens. It does it. It automatically populates 
the list you, using that formula. It does it for us. It, it uh, subtracts the mean from everything. Okay? Now, use your right arrow key to move over to the third column. What do we usually have in list three here? We square everything. Now, am I squaring list one? No, I'm squaring list two. So, once again, I'm going to hit the data button. I'm going to arrow over to formula. And I'm going to hit enter to add a new formula. I want list 3 to be list 2 squared. How do I get list 2 on the screen now? Press data. Press data. Make sure L2 is highlighted. Right now, list 1 is highlighted. So hit your down arrow key to highlight list 2 and hit enter. So, so far I've got list 3 will be list 2. Now what am I going to do? I'm going to square it. I want it to be list 2 squared, so I'll hit my X squared button. So list 3 will now become list 2 squared. So if I hit enter, it does it. Okay? So it does that much of it for you. Um, now, I could now add up all these numbers by hand like I always do. But if you're still with me this far, why not one more trick? Again, when there are 20 numbers, the following trick will, re will really help you. Um, <coughs> let's use our, that same information where we found the standard deviation. Everybody hit second data to get back to the statistics menu. Okay? Once again, we're going to do one variable statistics, just like we did before. But be careful. Don't hit enter right now. We want the sum of list 3. Okay? So we need to make sure list 3 is highlighted, because we want the sum of all of list 3. So go over to list 3 with your arrow key. And hit enter. Until you get the list. Okay? Now, we're not going to look at the mean or the standard deviation right now. I want the number that tells me the sum. Can anybody remember the, the symbol for sum? That e. that e. Item number five. We learned this early in the year. That that's a capital letter sigma. In math and science, this means the sum of everything. So this number... 1,026.84, that's the sum of list 3. That's what we need, okay? So if you remember these tricks, your calculator will do so much of this for you. Just keep your eye on that 1026.84. So going back to our, our table, um, that's our 1026 that shows up right here. Okay, so that's how your calculator can do so much of this for you.